Welcome back to Le Boton, the button. That's what it is in English. And we stay in Trinidad and Tobago. A historic gold medal at London 2012 was followed by bronze at Rio 2016 in the men's javelin throw. Trinidad and Tobago's Kishorn Walcott wrote his name in history by becoming the first Caribbean male athlete as well as the first of African descent to win a gold medal. What a time it was in a throwing event at the Olympic Games. Now his 2023 season last year was disrupted by an injury at the World Athletics Championships that, was for, that, that forced him to withdraw from the competition. He is now back and is ready to compete again for the Twin Island Republic. He shares his recovery journey with Donald Oliver. Let's take a look. At 19 years old, the spotlight of the world was on his broad shoulders. Here's Keyshawn Walcott. Great start. And what a moment this must be for this young man, 19 years old. Over 80,000 fans in the stands. Heart pumping out of his chest, I imagine. Looks calm though. Another rocket right arm for the Trinidad TNT man. That one is even bigger. He's taken the lead. Wow. A super run by the Bahamas last night. And the youngster from Trinidad and Tobago rockets the right arm. You saw it from the left his hand. It was flying. 83-5-1 first round. This is called peaking right dead on time. This one sinks to the ground just short of the 85 meter line. It was a meteoric rise in those early years. However, injuries provided unexpected setbacks. His biggest test came in 2023 as terrible news came out of Budapest. We have breaking news from the World Athletics Championships. The 2012 Olympic javelin champion, Trinidad and Tobago's Kishoran Walcott, is a non-starter for the final of his event in Budapest. We are hearing he has suffered an apparent Achilles injury. The injury, though, came as no surprise to Kishoran. He has Hagelund's deformity, a bony growth on his left heel bone where the Achilles tendon is attached. I was going through my paces. I was doing some crossover drills and I instantly felt like a pop, like a small pop in my left Achilles. And in the moment I knew exactly what happened, but I instantly went into denial. I was determined to still go to qualify, to do the qualification because it was just a, a moment what I, I worked for really hard for the entire season and I tried my best to be as healthy as possible going into the qualification, uh, going into the World Championship. And then literally 20 minutes before the competition, that happens. It's been a long journey. The last six and a half months has been really tough. Um, we have been working really hard. I've, I know I have to work twice as hard just to be able to come back and uh, compete with those guys because uh, I know everybody's working hard towards the Olympics. So I have to put my head down and despite all the struggles, we have been, training has been coming along really well. Um, the most important thing, I've been patient. Um, we've been doing everything that we needed to do from the inception, uh, the listening to the doctor, um, listening to the physio, you know, and doing everything. But I must say, things are coming together. And based on how I feel right now, I would say it's coming together really well. And why are you in Jamaica, the extra hot sun? Ah! No, <laughs> no, at all. This was very unexpected. Um, I have been working with a physio. Her name is uh, Yael. It had been a continuous struggle for him in the previous five years. He was unable to throw in the 2019 World Championship final, and it also affected him during the 2021 season. So when the tendon snapped, he thought for sure he was going to miss the Paris Olympics. If it was any way for the injury to happen, it happened the best way possible because I wouldn't be here today training. Um, the Achilles was ruptured at the insertion, which made it a bit easier to connect and heal as fast as possible. But for Kishorn, hope. Honestly, I also thought like my career would be over. Yael Jack Bear, who is also from Trinidad and Tobago, is no stranger to our Sportsmax screen. She was instrumental in the story of Jamaica's para-athlete, Kina Hewitt, 
a former track star who became paralyzed after a motor vehicle accident. And now she has been instrumental in the recovery of her fellow countrymen. Having to do virtual rehab, it required a lot of communication between both Kishon and I in terms of, okay, how does this feel? Can we increase this? Can we reduce this? And because he's very aware of his body and understands his body, he can tell me very clearly like what he is feeling. So that definitely helped in my management of his injury and how to plan his programs. But as Kishorn recovers to full fitness, he remembers how it all started for him on the global stage. And 2012 was the year to remember. After winning Karif de Gold, he won the World Juniors before lighting up London's Olympics. So relaxed, so happy, just happy to be throwing and participating. Um, I think that was worked for me the best. So I was very relaxed and just enjoying the moment. But as you said, nobody expected 84 meters to win the Olympics. Kishorn holds Trinidad and Tobago's national record of 90.16 meters set in 2015. It has been a big highlight um, of my career. I also throwing 90 meters uh, has been a big highlight of my career as well. But I would like to say that a lot of people overlook my bronze medal in 2016, which has been a big highlight for me because I had to work really, really, really hard to come back to the Olympics to get a second medal. While competing at the highest level for yet another Olympics in Paris this summer will be a dream come true on his journey of twists and turns in recent seasons, Kishorn will be hoping his name will be up in lights in the city known for showcasing them. I still remember the day that Kishorn won his gold medal in London. I was 13 years old, and not to make Donald feel old, but yeah, I remember those days. Uh, anyways, we are now joined on set by one of the persons. We have guests here. <laughs> we <laughs> literally have guests here, and you pull off that stunt. Okay. All right. <laughs> As I was saying, we are joined on set now by one of the persons that was very instrumental in Kishorn's recovery, his physiotherapist as well as his country mate, Yael Jagby. Yael, welcome to Le Baton. Thank you for having me. Yeah, let me, <laughs> let me just start by, mm -hmm. uh, this is, don't worry, this is how we banter. That's but uh, <laughs> let me just start by, by getting from your perspective, the medical perspective, I guess, mm -hmm. just how bad was uh, Kishorn's injury? Correct. Well, the mere fact that he had to do surgery gives us an indication as to how bad it was. So as you said, the tendon came off of where it attaches at the back of his heel. So he had to do surgery to reattach it and yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And you said that he, he knew his body uh, yes. in the feature that we just mm -hmm, watched. Mm -hmm. Was it easy then for you to, I guess, put a program together um, to ensure that Kishorn is as fit and as ready as he can be? Yes, definitely. So theoretically, it takes about a year for Achilles ruptures to be healed after surgery. So the goal was always to get him back in time for Olympics. So it meant expediting that process, but doing it as safely as possible. So with him being so aware of his body, it helped me to kind of gauge, OK, we can push a little bit more or we can take off a little bit more. Also, I mean, it was done mainly virtually because I'm, I'm living here. Right. <laughs> so. I went to Trinidad November and March, and he came up here April. So when I went to Trinidad or home, <laughs> I was able to better kind of get an understanding to where he was in terms of healing, the integrity of the scar, because he does have a scar there from the surgery. So all those things combined helped to, you know, formulate a program for him to get him back ready for Olympics. You, you, you said that he knew his body well, mm -hmm. but you'd, you'd have to also gauge his mind as well when, when, when going through these these things with you, uh, what was his mental state light, like at the beginning when he approached you? Um, I think he was very hopeful from the mm. beginning. He knew that he is going to go to Olympics, which was very oh. helpful. Yeah, oh. he, that was always the goal. Like, you know, we need to get back in time. But, um, you know, I will always ask, how are you doing? And he'd be like, I'm fine, I'm good. So I would trust what he's saying. But definitely, um, it will be challenging mental, mentally, physically, emotionally. But I definitely try to give him support in all aspects so that we can get to this goal of him getting back in time for Olympics. You're considered to be an angel of hope for, for, for some uh, in, in the arena, in the sporting arena in particular. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me about, about what 
um, you offer on a day-to-day -day basis to, and it's not just athletes, right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's not correct. specifically to, to, to sports, but, right, but to everyday people mm -hmm. who want um, your, your, your help in that regard. Correct. Um, what, what, what do you have to bring to the table every day? Yes. Well, firstly, I love what I do. So that really gives me the push to do it every day. And I really couldn't do it without God, honestly, because God is guiding me on how to help these clients of mine. So I provide physiotherapy and sports performance enhancement. So physiotherapy is for rehabilitation of persons along the entire spectrum, from babies straight up to elderly and everybody in between. So but specifically with sports, um, I do a sports physio and performance enhancement, where it's basically detecting injuries, muscular imbalances, and fixing them to overall help their performance improve. Hmm. Yeah, when, when you're dealing with athletes, mm -hmm. being a, an athlete myself, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily on the professional level, but Donald, keep quiet. But <laughs> I, I know it is, it is quite hard to keep mm -hmm. us disciplined uh, especially when we're injured mm -hmm. because sometimes we don't even watch what we eat yeah but mm -hmm. how important is it and how tough of a task is it for you to mm -hmm. ensure that you call them and that they're doing the exercises mm -hmm. that they're ensuring that they're eating correctly that mm -hmm. they're ensuring well I mean that's not your job right? yeah. that's a dietitian yeah. job but you have to ensure that they are taking care of their bodies mm -hmm. how difficult of a job is that thankfully it isn't as difficult because the athletes that come to me are very disciplined, very motivated. But I think what's important is I try to create a safe space for them where they feel validated and feel like human because they are going through all of these things and trying to meet up to expectations of themselves and the country and things like that. So I think also, also just creating a safe space where they can be and realize, okay, I'm getting there. And also that psychological aspect of motivating them to get to where they need to go. Obviously, they're going to have some down days, and I'm there to support them through it all. So I think it's just creating a safe space where they understand what is required, but also there to support them. Have you seen what others would probably consider um, miracles or people beating really large odds to, to, to really just overcome and, and, and go to the place where they had imagined or even didn't imagine to be? Yes, I have. I have. I have. Um, yeah, I've had instances where persons had fractures and couldn't r train or run or do anything like that, and they were able to overcome that and not only get better, but be better than what they were before. So that's always the goal, to not only get you back to where you were before, but get you better. Hmm. What, was, what was the worst injury you had to encounter? Wow. If you can remember. In general or yeah, in, in sports? Yeah, in general. In general. I would say Kino, um, Kino paraplegic. Hewitt. Yeah, mm -hmm. Kino Hewitt, paraplegic. Um, you know, trying to regain movement in his legs, just using my hands. Because at the time, we didn't have any um, electrical stimulation at where we were at the time. So it basically was using my hands and trying to facilitate. And I think for sure that has been the most difficult client I've had thus far. Uh, you know, you mentioned that um, f for you, it's, it's also can be a, a spiritual exercise mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, what God has given you in terms of the gift and the patience, obviously. Yeah. Do you also introduce that in terms of the, the rehab and, and how have they embraced that aspect, you, you feel? Yeah, so I, um, because I know everybody has different views yes. and things like that, so it's not something I will put to them. But all, all I would say is let's have faith, you know. Just, and I based on where they are, because they talk to me a lot. And that's, I think, the beauty of having such a good rapport with the patients, because they will talk to you. You see, They see you every day or twice a week. So they're going to open up. And then based on that, I can see, okay, where they are at spiritually. And then I can say, don't worry, you know, have faith. God got you, you know. Nothing is impossible with God and things like that. When, when did you first think about physiotherapy and, and getting involved in it? And, and why? why? Why did you pursue it? Well, like you, I was an athlete. I played field hockey. No, I believe you. <laughs> you, I believe. But proceed. <laughs> yes, I, I played field hockey when I was in Trinidad. Um, I knew I wanted to do something in the medical field, but I knew I didn't want to be a doctor. Mm. And I think the same reason I wanted to build community and relations, like friendship, well, friendship, but rapport with clients and stuff like that. Um, so I eventually got injured with my knee playing hockey, and I had to go to a physical therapist. And with going to a physical therapist and reaping the benefits of doing physical therapy, I was like, yep, that's it. That's what I want to do. And I haven't turned back yet.
Mm. Why did you choose to have your practice in Jamaica? <laughs> the million dollar question. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I studied here. I went to UWE. So UWE Moon is the only university in the Caribbean that provides physical therapy. So mm -hmm. I came here in 2012, did my program, um, went back home for six months. Um, and at the time, I felt like I didn't want to do physio anymore. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because it was hard to start my internship and things like that. Um, so I got an opportunity to come back in 2017 and I've been here since and Jamaica's home for me and I enjoy being here and I enjoy providing services to Jamaicans and now trainees and to <laughs> everybody I have a Beijing and Bahamian so just I think here is the mecca for sports especially uh, with track and field and I think it's just the best place to be. It, you know um, because again I found it interesting I always find it fascinating when uh, people come from other Caribbean nations I consider you guys brave right? I think he's brave, and I think you are brave as well mm -hmm. to, to come to another country and reside here, right? Yeah. But, but were there any challenges in the beginning to, to try and make your name? Because now you're working with almost everybody. People who follow, <laughs> follow you on Instagram will realize that you're working with the likes of Sharika Jackson and, mm. and, and many other athletes. So what, in terms of the beginning of that journey, yeah. was it difficult for you? Definitely was, but I knew the end goal, so I understood that I needed to volunteer and get to understand the sports better. Even when I'm a registered physiotherapist, I still understood I need to learn, learn more. And I just built bit by bit. And I'm continuing to build and grow and learn. And um, I'm open to continuing to learn. So it definitely had its challenges. It still has its challenges. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely I'm understanding and trusting the process that I will get there when the time is right. D Donald, I think we need to tell Ricardo to give Yael a call. Yeah, oh, Ricardo. Ricardo. Yeah, he need. Oh goodness, he needs. We, he needs help. Yeah, Ricardo I needs we, help. We need to. Yeah. Uh, we we, 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 we we'll, we'll pass on the information no to him. <laughs> yes. But Yaya, yeah, yes. thank you so much. We <laughs> appreciate you, you being me. here and making time out of your busy schedule. I'm a little bit surprised that he actually got here <laughs> in time. But uh, thank you. you so much. Yes. Oh, thank. <laughs> well, you know, we we take a break. Back thank with you more for after me. this. Stay with us.